Here we are again with yet another Wellness Wednesday. I hope and I pray that you are having a good week. Uh, I pray that your focus has been where it needs to be, that there is more to life than what you've currently seen and more to life than what you're currently experiencing. Uh, just know that no matter what you're walking through, what you're going through right now, uh, you're probably not the first and you probably won't be the last. And whatever it is that you're facing, uh, eventually comes to an end. It could be that it's an end to this world and this earth, but that being the case, there is another one that is our eternal home that is yet to come. So I wanted to take a moment um, to address um, what seems to be the, the surge of negativity. And I know I talked about this last week on here, but I've actually found some research, and I think, I think honestly, if we were to um, petition or we were to look uh, at forcing, um, uh, how do I say it, uh, media outlets, that they could possibly stop covering negative news. And what I mean by that is, um, and it seems to me that it's been since uh, September 11th, 2001, that we have had an influx of negativity uh, within the 24-hour constant in-your-face news cycle. We've had this constant bombardment of, hey, uh, here's this negative thing that's happening. Hey, here's this neg other negative thing that's happening. Here's this other negative thing that's happening. And what it's forcing us to do is it's forcing us to make opinions and to live our lives based upon all the negativity. I, I had a, a conversation uh, last night, and, and the conversation was about seeing what you want to see. Um, we tend to focus on the negative because the negative is the mantra. The negative is the, it's the push. It is the, uh, it's, it's the thing that gets your goat. It's the thing that pushes you into something. And I want to share something with you. I hope this doesn't mess everything up, but there is an article in the Huffington Post, and this article goes back to February 19th, 2015, uh, by Carolyn Gregoire, uh, what constant exposure to negative news is doing to our mental health. And at one point in her article, uh, she talks about the work of British psychologist, Dr. Graham Davey, uh, who specializes in the psychological effects of media violence, suggests that violent media exposure uh, can exacerbate or contribute to the development of stress, anxiety, depression, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, you heard me. If you're watching all of that news and all of that coverage and all of that negativity, you're, you're, you're basically forcing yourself into PS, PTSD. That's basically what's happening. So, uh, uh, Dr. Davey is quoted, negative news can significantly change an individual's mood, especially if there is the tendency in the news broadcast to emphasize suffering and also the emotional components to the story. So if you are not only getting the negative, but you're getting the emotional impact of the negative, well, now the news is even bombarding you even more with that negativity. So I, I have this for you today, uh, and I'm gonna type it in here so that way it's part of our messages. Second uh, Timothy. And we're going to be in chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And, and I found this this week, and it hit right at the right time um, where I was trying to, uh, I was studying generosity, I'm studying uh, stewardship and, and how to be the church, how to do more with less, uh, and, and all of those things. How can we cope uh, with trauma, things that are happening in our lives? And so I found this in, in part of my study, and I want to read it to you. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, you should know this, Timothy. Now, Paul, the Apostle Paul, is writing to Timothy, who he left in charge of the church, I believe, in Ephesus. You can, you can look that up and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but he's writing to Timothy, and he's letting him know what's about to happen. He says, you should know this, Timothy that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. So in other words, all of this difficulty, all the stuff that we're going through, it's, it's okay because it's, it's, it's meant to be. For people will love only themselves and their money. 
they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends. They will be reckless. They will be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. This is, this is verse, verse 5 here, and I want you to listen close to verse 5 here. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Hmm. Interesting. They will act religious, but will reject the power that could make them godly. How often do we do that? How often do we look at our situation and we've been faced with trauma? We've been faced with trouble. Uh, we've been faced with uh, things in our life that just aren't seeming to go well. One of the first things that we do is we want to reject God and we want to try to find things that make us feel good temporarily, right? I, I'm, I'm, I can raise my hand. I'm guilty too, right? We, we want to make sure that we are pleasure, filling that pleasure void, and yet in the meantime, we are setting aside God and pushing aside the Holy Spirit, which is the one thing that we could tap into, the one resource that we have that could make all of this go away, not necessarily go away, but would make all of this better. Because we are no longer focused on our earthly gain, our earthly pleasure and our earthly wealth, we are focused on our eternal home in which we aren't there yet. And part of that conversation we had last night, night, last night or the night before was the fact that it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color the drapes are. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of car you have in the driveway, if you have a driveway. It doesn't matter if you are beating cancer or not beating cancer. It doesn't matter if you are wealthy or whether you're struggling to pay bills. What matters is, is that we get back to remembering whose we are and where we are going. One of the things that we study this week in our study of the book Enough by Adam Hamilton is that we are studying about your purpose. See, I believe very strongly that everyone has a purpose and everyone has a calling. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, you have a purpose in life and you have a calling that God has placed upon you. And you may not even believe in God, but that's the point that God doesn't matter. He doesn't care if you believe in him or not. He's, he's set you on a course on this earth for a purpose. And when you begin to live into that purpose, when you begin to see and accept that purpose, things start to change. Do they get easier? No. Do you get richer? No. My chances of winning the lottery right now are like slim to none. I, I, me being a millionaire is probably not going to happen in this life. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to live in my purpose. I'm trying to live in my calling. And therefore, life seems to be a bit more fruitful. Life seems to be a bit more enjoyable. I can't tell you the last time I watched the news other than to watch the weather. I can't tell you. I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. It was probably uh, trying to, to, to catch up, uh, or, or it was the Sunday morning when the coverage of the Dayton shooting was on, uh, and they inter interrupted my uh, uh, Charles Stanley Sunday morning with, with the news coverage, so I was, I was glued in. I was locked in because I had, had not known that happened that night before. We are focused, we, and, and it makes me wonder, it really makes me wonder, and don't call me a conspiracy theorist because it may not be true. It makes me wonder how much, of the, how much of our media is planned. How much of it is, hey, if we just push this kid over the edge, right, there's going to be a great news story and we can get all the coverage and we can get, right, how much of that is planned because we got to get ratings, we got to get advertisers, we got to make money, right? I don't watch it. I don't want to watch it. I was talking with Brenda here in the, in the Maplewood office 
uh, Tuesday and one of the things yesterday and one of the things that we said was what would happen if we started a 24-hour news channel that was dedicated only to positive news what would happen would, would we get the ratings would we get I mean were are people drawn to joy and happiness as much as they're drawn to threat of violence anxiety and depression are they drawn to it because negativity breeds on itself and if we can get away from it and start talking about the positives, maybe we can push the world into a positive direction. Uh, I, I pray that this message today has found you well on a Wellness Wednesday, that the start of school for some of you did not hurt and that you are still alive and that uh, you've weathered today's storm, that no matter what happens today, tomorrow the sun is gonna rise with you or without you and that you are not at your eternal home yet. I want you to think about what it is that makes this world what it makes it. Is that what you want to live in? Do you want to live for the world or do you want to find purpose? Do you want to find something more, something deeper that can sustain for eternity? I hope that you choose the latter. Um, we've had some technical difficulties this week, so the, the, the YouTube channel is, is hit or miss. You don't have this week's messages yet, but you will after tonight. Uh, when we get done with the Wellness Wednesday, uh, we've got a Bible study here in Maplewood at 7. And so it'll be after that before we upload the Wellness Wednesday to YouTube. But uh, feel free to check back. Feel free to listen. Again, if you're on the YouTube channel, link, hit subscribe, hit the bell. You will uh, love it because then every time new content's up, you'll get that, you'll get that new content. Coming up in September, you're really going to see us putting more content on our YouTube channel and our Facebook channels. So feel free to stay in touch. I really think that this positive push, this positive news push is where we wanna go and how we wanna do this. We wanna keep people focused on, on the Holy Spirit and what your calling is and what your purpose is. So have a great rest of your week. I hope to see you Sunday. Don't forget, 9 a.m. Maplewood, 10.30 to Graph. You are more than welcome to come as you are. You are always welcome. You are always loved. Do not let someone else's view of you or what you think their view of you is keep you from worshiping God. Uh, I love you guys and have a great rest of your week.